This video will introduce 25 of the 35 assembly instructions that can be used at the PIC 16F887. The 16F887 has 35 total instructions making it a reduced instruction set computer. There are four types of commands that can be executed in assembly for this microcontroller. Some of them are register oriented, meaning that they take action on an entire register. Some of them are bit oriented, so they either inspect or change one particular bit at a time. Some of them are literal oriented, meaning they involve constants, and others are control oriented in that they can control the behavior of the microcontroller, such as putting it to sleep. So we're going to examine some of the commands that are available to us for this particular microcontroller. We begin with CLRW, which simply clears out the accumulator or the W register, the working register. And so this will just set the value in W to zero. You can also put a constant value into W by using the MOVLW, which is short for move a literal into W. It's important to note that different values can be represented in several bases. And so if you put 0x before a value, it's interpreted as hexadecimal. Also, to use hexadecimal, you can end it with an h. But it's important to note that if the value in hexadecimal starts with a letter, such as this, which is fc, you need to add the leading 0. Also, if you just put a constant like this, 37 is interpreted as hexadecimal 37. In addition to hexadecimal, you can also input values in decimal by doing D, quote, 37, quote. And you can also put binary values in similar ways as you see showcased here. In addition to clearing W, you might want to clear out any of the other registers that you have. And that is done using the CLRF command, which puts zeros in every bit of whatever register you specify. So in this case, you can do that with Tris A, which would correspondingly set up all of the bits in port A as outputs. You can set and clear individual bits, setting meaning make them ones, clearing mean making, means making them zeros. And so the syntax here would be something like BSF, whatever the name of the register is, in this case port A, comma zero. And what that would do is set bit zero of port A to a one, assuming that you have previously made it an output using the Tris A register. And of course, it's important to note, whenever you use any register, you must ensure before you execute these commands that you are in the right bank and those particular registers are available in the bank you are currently working in. MOVF is short for move F, which is really a bit of a misnomer because it actually indicates a copy rather than a move because the contents of where you're sourcing the information remain unchanged. So in this case, you can move something into either W by putting comma zero or move it back into itself by putting a comma one. So MOVF port A comma zero would make a copy of your port A value and put that into the W register. MOVF port A comma one would take the value in port A and copy it back into itself. The main benefit there being that it would affect the status register and allow you to check to see if that value was equal to zero. MOVWF takes what's in W and moves it over to a particular register. So it takes the value in W in this case and moves it to port B. And again, this is just a copy because the value in W is not changed. Swap F simply takes the lower nibble and swaps it with the upper nibble. So the lower four bits go to where the upper four bits were and the upper four bits go to where the lower four bits were. And just like other commands we've talked about, this result can be stored in either the W register or the particular register you are working in. So at this point, I would suggest you try to pause the video and make a table 
for the value that would be in W and the value in port B after the following command sequence. When you've finished making your table and have the values enumerated all the way through, I suggest you restart from this portion of the video and check your answers. And we're back, and so here is the table of values. The CLRW command clears out W, so the value in W goes to zero. At this point, we don't know what's in port B, so we're going to indicate that with question marks. Then, we are moving literal 17 into W. And in this case, that's 17 hexadecimals, so we see that indicated here. And then we're going to move W into F. So we're taking what's in W, moving that over to port B. Then we're swapping the value in port B, and we're putting that into the W register. That's what the zero is here. So we take what's in B, we swap the upper and the lower nibble, and then we put that down here in W. B remains unchanged. Now we're going to swap what was in port B, putting that back into itself. And that's what we have right here. So these are the final values of W and B after executing these commands. Some other commands here, you can increment values, which means just add one to the current value. And again, you can store that into the W register or into the register itself. So if you had INCF port B comma one, then port B is now going to equal one more than what it was before. If you had INCF port B comma zero, then that would put the port B value plus one into W, but port B would maintain its same value. You can also do an INCFSZ, which will not only increment the value, but if you increment and actually overflow, going from 255 to 256, then you can actually skip the very next line of code. And so this is useful for creating loops, as we will see later on. You can also decrement a value and decrement skipping of zero. So if you get all the way down to zero, then you can skip the next line. Similarly, these results can be stored in W or into the register itself. You can do some arithmetic with the pick, so you can add a literal value to W, and that, of course, gets stored back into W itself because you can't save something into a constant. And you can add what's in W into a particular register. And again, with that, you can store the results into W or into the register itself using the zero or the one. You can subtract values, but in this case, you need to be very careful about the order in which that subtraction happens. So SUBLW subtracts W from a literal value, and SUBWF subtracts W from a particular register. So you want to make sure you pay attention to the values and the order in which those things happen. This particular pick uses two's complement arithmetic, so that's how you can simulate what's going to happen with the subtraction, is just to do subtraction using two's complement arithmetic. RLF is a rotate left, which is basically a bit shift one to the left, but this goes through the carry bit in the status register. And effectively, this just multiplies things by two, because if you clear out the carry bit, and then you move everything to the left and you replace bit zero with the former carry bit, then everything is moved to the left, you pad it with a zero, which is a multiply by two. Our RF is exactly the opposite, moving things to the right, and in this case your carry replaces bit seven and everything shifts down and your former bit zero value becomes the new carry bit. So at this point you might want to pause the video and see if you can trace through, in this case, keeping track of W, port B, and the status register. And we're back. Here is a table showcasing what is happening. In this case, in the status register, I've indicated these two zeros. That is because I looked down and realized I need to operate on port B. So hopefully at some point, these two bits have been set to zero, zero to put us into bank zero. 
So clearing W put zeros into W. We don't know what's going on on port B as of yet. And we do know right here that the Z bit has to be set because by clearing we have now created a zero value. The BCF command is clearing bit zero of the status register. So here we have the status register bit zero going to a zero. W and port B remain unchanged. Now we are moving a literal value into W and this is 17 so hexadecimal 17 is coming in right here. Then we can subtract a W from literal. In this case we're going to subtract 17 from 10. And so what you can do is take 17, formulate the 2's complement of it and add that to 10. And what you end up with is this value here, which is 2's complement for negative 7. And so in this case, we're still over in the status register in bank 0. And in this case, we did not have a carry and we are not 0. Um, so we end up with this particular value here. Again, still don't know what port B is. Now, after this line, we're moving W into port B. So what was in W before is now copied over to port B. And then we're going to increment port B and store the result back into itself. So now you see the value in port B has been incremented by one. And now we're going to rotate right what was in port B and put the results into the W register. So here we take the value in port B and we rotate things through. And in this case, this zero comes from the status register. That's your C bit. And then everything else has been shifted to the right. And at this point, this zero has been rotated on through, but we already had a zero in the C bit, so that just remains. And then down here, we add a literal five to W, so W here has five added to it. And of course, the result is not zero, and we didn't have a carry, so those bits remain zero. In addition to arithmetic, you can also perform logical operations. So you can do a bitwise anding with ANDLW, which will take what's in the W register and perform basically the same function as if you were to take each bit and run it through an AND gate one at a time. And so in this case, ANDLW would, as you know, zeros ended with anything give you zeros. So that's going to zero out the upper four bits and keep any of the lower four bits that happen to be a one. Inclusive OR is what we might normally call just ORing a literal with W. But in this case, you are able to set multiple bits at a time. This is not to be confused with exclusive ORing to where you have to have one or the other be a one but not both. And so in this case you perform bitwise ORing and so you can actually in this case IORLW with this value here you can put ones in all of those places and zeros right there. In this case this is the exclusive OR. That is nice to allow us to toggle some bits on or off. That will perform an exclusive OR with whatever constant value you put in and the values in the register. So in this case, where you have zeros, that's going to maintain what we're in the upper four bits because you have an F. Here, that's going to toggle the lower four bits. In this case, you can do the logical operations between W and a register as well. So you can put in whatever value you want to work with into W, and then you can perform these logical commands with the registers of interest. COMF complements F. It's basically like taking every one of the bits and running it through an inverter, so you get the exact opposite of what you started with. For example, COMF Tris B comma zero would actually take everything that's in Tris B, 
flip each of those bits, and because you have the zero, it would store it into the W register. So here is another good spot where you can pause the video and see if you can trace through looking at the W register and the port B register. So here is the table of values that have come through. In this case, we're clearing W. We don't know what port B is at this point. Then we exclusive OR with hexadecimal 63. So there's the 63 we see there. And then we're going to AND a literal 17 with this. So that would keep what's in this bit, which was already a 0, and then keep what's in the last three bits, which is 0, 1, 1. And so this result is being stored back into W. And then we are increasing or inclusive ORing a literal with W of 0x0f. Zero zero so what that is going to do is set all of the lower four bits to ones. Now for the first time, this next command, we are moving W over to port B. So here is W and then port B is right there. You are going to move this value from W over to port B with this command. And then COMF port B comma zero takes what was in port B, flips all of those bits and stores the result into the W register as you see here. So in this set of slides we've talked about 25 different commands we have 10 more yet to learn, and at this point in the semester, you know how to use 15 of the 72 special function registers. As we learn more of the things the PIT can do for us and the trainer kit can do for us, we will add to the number of registers and commands that you know.